What is up amigos? Today we're looking at vorticity. We're gonna be covering what is vorticity. We're gonna go through an example calculation with the equation and how this relates to a velocity field, how to calculate the vorticity from a velocity field. And we're gonna go through clockwise versus counterclockwise vorticity. And this is quite an important point here. So first of all, let's talk about what is vorticity. Well, vorticity determines whether a fluid is rotating or not. If the vorticity is zero, it means that the fluid is not rotating, it's irrotational. If the vorticity is not zero, it means that it is rotational, it is rotating around. For example, let's say we have our wind tunnel and it's coming at us out of the page. We take a cross-sectional area of this wind tunnel and we have the fluid coming out and it's now rotating this way perhaps. This means that there is some rotation and that means there is vorticity. If there is no rotation, then the vorticity is zero. And we have the different directions. So we have I, which is coming out of the page. We have J, which is going to the right and left. And K, which is going to the up and down. So positive K is up, positive J is to the right, and positive I is out of the page. So how do we calculate vorticity? What is the equation for it? And this is really the underpinning idea of vorticity. So vorticity, which is denoted by omega usually, is divided into three main components for the i, j, and k directions. So the rotation in the i direction, the rotation, rotation in the j direction, and the rotation in the k direction. So for the i direction, we have the change of the velocity in the, in the k direction divided by the distance this occurs over divide, minus the change in the velocity in the j direction divided by the distance this occurs over. We'll explain each one of these as we go through them. I'll just write them out first. Then we have the change in the, sorry, this is the u, so in the i direction, divided by the change, the distance that it occurs over, divided by the change in the velocity in the k direction, divided by the distance that occurs over at this point, plus the change in the v, this is u, this is v, divided by dx, minus du divided by dy, the distance. So this here is the vorticity in the x direction. I should put a, a vector sign here. Vorticity is a vector. There is a, a direction to it along with a magnitude. This is the vorticity in the y direction. And this is the vorticity in the z direction. So what does this all mean? So this first part here, let's take it here and discuss what it means. So this vorticity in the x direction, this is the vorticity about this point coming out of the page. So this direction here. And how do we calculate it? So to do that, I'm going to give a very simple velocity field. This is something that you can get from CFD or if you go into a wind tunnel and you take measurements in a cross-sectional plane, you know what the velocity is at each different point. You can then calculate what the vorticity is. It's quite simple actually. So, so we have this center point and we have in the plane, and we want to calculate what the vorticity is at this point. What we do is we have different points around it. So one up, one down, one to the right, one to the left, because we're looking in the Y and Z directions. You note this is in the I direction. So the I direction is actually effectively irrelevant in this calculation. It's the uh, Y and Z directions or the J and K directions, which are important. So this is Y2 here. This is Y1, this is Z2 and Z1. Now, we know that we need to have the velocities and the distances. Let's cover the distances first. Let's say all these points are equidistant around this central point. And this is really the easiest way to do it. I mean, if you have the points not equidistant around this point, then you start to get some skewness in the result. So it's best to have them equidistant. And let's say that they're all one meter from the central point here. And the reason why I'm using one meter is because it's quite easy for us to used to calculate, it can be anything, but one it should be very fine. So for a regular wind tunnel, for example, having a one meter distance between two points that you're calculating the vorticity over, then that's going to result in a very, uh, <laughs> a very poor calculation of vorticity because the vorticity is going to change quite a lot in between those points. So you wanna have a finer resolution. If on the other hand, you're let's say in the atmosphere and you're behind a, airliner, for example, and you have a massive cross-sectional area, a one meter resolution might be fine because you have such big uh, flow features in this cross-sectional area 
that having a smaller resolution doesn't really allow you to pick up the maxima and minima as much, like you already pretty much have found them. Whereas in a small cross-sectional area, you want to have a very fine resolution, maybe 0.5 millimeters, but because we want to make this quite easy for us to calculate, you can follow along at home, we want to have very simple units. So we have one meter, so you can do this calculation in your head along as I'm doing them, and you can see, say, okay, this is how this works. So that's why I'm just using one meter here. So what about the velocities? Now, we know that we have the distances between these points without the velocity. So to calculate this omega x, we have on the baselines here, dy's. So that means we want to know what the change in the velocity in the z direction is at y2 compared to y1. So we want to know what the velocity is at the z velocity at y2 is. So I'm going to say that the velocity at z2 so the here is three meters per second. The velocity in the z direction, so up or down at point y1 is minus two meters per second. The velocity in the left and right direction, so the k, the um, y direction or the j direction at z2 is going to be two meters per second. And the velocity in the left or right direction, so the uh, y direction at z1 is going to be minus two, sorry, it's gonna be one meter per second, not minus two, one meter per second. So how the vorticity works is we want to know how the velocity in certain directions are, occur are changing based on the orthogonal direction. So in this particular case, the velocity in the up and down direction as we go from left to right, or the velocity in the left and right direction as we go from bottom to top. And that's how this equation works. So D, dw divided by dy equals three. So this is the velocity in the uh, in the z direction at point y two minus minus two. So we want to know the distance, the difference between the two. And this is minus here. So this is minus two meters per second. But it's three minus this value here. So it's minus here. If you Want me to clarify that? Let me know in the comments below and I can go through that again. The distance between y2 and y1 is one minus minus one because this is at plus one minus one. There's two minutes distance between the two. Now, dv divided by dz. So the velocity at z2 in the uh, y direction is two meters per second minus one. That's the difference between the two. As we go from bottom to top, the y velocity changes from one meter per second to two meters per second. And these are stationed two meters apart. So this is at plus, plus one meter here. This is at minus one meter here. So it's two meters in total. And this is in the i direction. This comes out to be five divided by two minus one divided by two in the i direction, which then equals four on two, which equals two, obviously. So there are a couple of things we need to cover here. First of all, what are the units? Well, let's look at this equation to begin with. On top, we can see that we have meters per second, we have velocity. So on top, we will have meters per second. On the bottom, we have only meters because this is just the length. So this goes to meters, meters per second, and the meters cancel out. So we're left with one on second, and that's actually the units. So it sounds a little bit strange because it's a, we often say like meters per second or meters per second per second or whatever. One on seconds is strange. Like say 500 one on seconds is weird or one 500 per seconds is, doesn't sound quite right, but that is the unit. <laughs> so we have one, two, one on seconds. That is the vorticity in the X direction. So what does this mean in terms of the clockwise versus counterclockwise? What does this re refer to? So there's one thing that I haven't talked about at the moment, which is the, at least explicitly, which is the sign. So this is positive here. It's positive two one on seconds. Does this sign matter? Well, we know that vorticity is a is a vector, it has a magnitude and a direction. So yes, the direction is related to this sign here. A positive plus two refers to it's positive in the certain direction. So what is the direction now? This is where counterclockwise and clockwise comes into it. Let's say we have this velocity field again, and we're looking at the I point here. So the I direction, when it's positive, is coming out of the page. As 
is quite standard. So that means that we have the positive J is to the right and the positive K is upwards, let's say. That's the coordinate system we're using. Well, if that is the case, then we use the right-hand rule. And if you've done any physics at all, you've probably come across the right-hand rule like a hundred times. And that's because it's very useful and it's no different in this particular case as well. We're gonna use the right-hand rule. We're gonna put our thumb in the direction of the axis that is positive. So positive is coming out of the page. Our thumb goes here. The way that our fingers curl around, that is positive. In this particular case, it's counterclockwise. So that means that a plus two one seconds is a plus two vorticity in the counterclockwise direction in here. So we can say that this velocity field, uh, sorry, this velocity field results in a vector, uh, vorticity, sorry, at this point, two one on seconds. And this is this direction. What if it was minus two one on seconds, which we could get if we change some of these values. Let's say we put a minus here and a plus here or whatever, and then we could get a positive, a negative value overall. That would then result in the opposite direction. So we know that curling around in this counterclockwise fashion is positive. If we have a negative, it means it has to go the other way. So this would result in actually going this way. This would be minus two one seconds. And the same thing goes for each one of the other orthogonal directions. So if you have the J, if we were to calculate the uh, vorticity in the Y direction, so about the J direction, we would then determine the positive vorticity based on putting our thumb in the positive J direction, which I've denoted here as to the right. And the way that our fingers curl around this axis is positive. So this way is positive. If I were to get a negative result, it means that the flow is rotating around this way. Likewise with the K direction, I'll place my thumb upwards because this is the direction that is positive. And my fingers going around the axis in this motion is positive, so going around this way. If I were to go around the other way, that's negative. So that is vorticity and how to calculate a form of a velocity field and clockwise versus counterclockwise and how it affects how it is related to the sign here. Let's briefly cover it again, just to recap. So what is vorticity? Vorticity refers to if the flow is rotating or not. If it is rotating, it's called rotational. If it is not rotating, it's called irrotational. An irrotational flow means that there is no vorticity. A rotational flow means that there is vorticity. And vorticity can be calculated in a fairly simple um, equation, really. There are just three components, one for the I direction, one for the J direction, one for the K direction. And all these three together will result in a vector showing the uh, vorticity in each direction. The vorticity around the X direction, so the I direction, is just the vorticity in this fashion, so going around here. The vorticity in the J is going around this motion, and in the K is going around up or down axis. And to calculate this is quite simple. We need to have a velocity field. We have a central point that we're looking at. This is the vorticity around this point. We then need to know four points around this central point. We need to know one higher than that, one lower than that, one to the right and one to the left. We need to know the distance between each one of these points to the central point, and hence the distance between each of these points. And we need to know what the velocity is at one, each of these points based on the other orthogonal direction. So for y2, we need to know what the velocity in the z direction is, as we do need to know that for y1 as well. For z2 and z1, we need to know what the velocity is in the y direction. Once we know that, we can figure out the differences based on these, this equation. So we have the velocity in the z direction at y2 minus the velocity in the direction in the z direction at y1 divided by the distance between these two points minus the difference in the velocity in the y direction at z2 minus the distance difference, sorry, minus the velocity in the z direction at, in the y direction at z1 divided by the distance between these two points. That will give us the velocity around the x-axis. We do the same thing for y and z, and we get a certain value. The value is also using a unit of one on seconds. This comes directly from this equation where we have meters per second per meter. The meters cancel out, we're left with seconds. So one on seconds. The positive and negative uh, signs refer to which direction the rotation is occurring around. For the i direction, that is typically positive when we have the thumb coming out of the page, the flow is coming out of the page at us. And we then put our thumb in that direction. And the way that our fingers curl around, that is the positive direction. That's counterclockwise in this case. For the J, we put our thumb in that direction. We rotate around, that's positive. And for K, we put it up, rotating around is also positive there. 
So that is Vorticity. Make sure to like, subscribe this video. And if you want to learn more about Vorticity in depth, check out a book by a guy called John D. Anderson. It's called Fundamentals of Aerodynamics. It's a textbook I've used a lot in the past, especially in my undergrad and PhD. And I really like it. Um, you can find a link in the description to it. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, amigos.